Hi, my name is Alice Lee. I'm an attorney at the law office of Joseph Potashnik and Associates. If you are being investigated or prosecuted for insurance fraud in New York, listen up. Our office may be able to help you. Insurance fraud has always been a big issue, but has really become one of the major targets for law enforcement here in New York. I'm going to talk a little bit about what it is, what triggers an investigation, and what to do if you find yourself a target of a criminal insurance fraud investigation. Examples of the commonly prosecuted cases of insurance fraud in New York are fraudulent no fault, commercial rate evasion, health care fraud, workers' comp premium fraud, life insurance fraud, homeowners' insurance fraud, or agent or broker fraud, mortgage and title fraud, fraudulent arson reports, and fraudulent car theft reports. Many cases start with private insurance audits and investigations. If the insurer believes that there has been fraudulent activity, they may initiate a civil action to recover the money or refer the case to law enforcement. In New York, there are several agencies that conduct fraud investigations. The Insurance Fraud Bureau of the State Insurance Department, the Attorney General's Office, or the local District Attorney's Office. In our practice, we have seen many cases in which people committed insurance fraud inadvertently because they were confused by the complex compliance rules. Whatever your case may be, it is extremely important for you to seek legal advice immediately as soon as you know that you are under investigation. As bad and as scary as it sounds, not everything may be lost. You have defenses. There may be ways to minimize your liability. You may, in some cases, even prevent criminal prosecution and resolve the case administratively. All these options may exist, but what will jeopardize your case is speaking with auditors or investigators before speaking with a lawyer. Let me give you an example of a recent case we handled. Our client was a doctor running a successful medical practice. She was investigated for allegedly using wrong codes for certain procedures performed in the office. The insurance company claimed that because our client allegedly used wrong codes, the insurance company overpaid close to $350,000. But when our office went through the billing records, we discovered that there was no other code our client could have used. We also found out that the insurance representative even told our client that she was entitled to use that code. Then we worked with our own forensic auditors to recreate the client's billing patterns. In the end, we convinced the insurance company that their case had no merit and their claim was withdrawn. In another case, we represented a contractor who was investigated for inaccurate reporting of how many workers he had on his payroll. Our client was also accused of under-reporting his income to the Department of Taxation and Finance. He owed the government a huge amount of money. Unfortunately, he spoke with the investigators and was eventually charged with a crime. Our client was facing jail time. We did our own investigation and found a number of mitigating factors, essentially indicating that our client acted out of dire necessity. It was not a defense, but it was a justification of his conduct. We then met with the prosecutors and presented our case. We knew that if we try the case, we will lose. So we needed to minimize our client's risk as much as possible. In the end, the client agreed and paid restitution and received conditional discharge, meaning that he didn't go to jail and was not sentenced to probation. Each case is different and sometimes the solution may be quite simple. If you want to discuss your case, we are just a phone call away. We will answer your questions and show you the way out.